Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and here is a tutorial for Project Spark. Uh, now, recently I've been looking at animation in Project Spark, and so I'm going to show you everything that I've learned in the last few weeks. Uh, if you look at my uh, last two live streams, we've had a look at um, animating pixel art. Uh, so, have a look at that, uh, especially the one that I did uh, on my own. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. So, I was asked to do a, how would you do a Pac-Man style uh, animation game? And so here's my Pac-Man. So he's eating away there like that. And if I go down, he eats like that. Etc, etc, etc. Uh, you'll notice in the middle, I've also got a little pixel man and he's showing you what happens when you move up and down and left and right. So if you wanted to make yourself a Legend of Zelda early style arcade type thing uh, with pixel art like a little Atari game, you could do that. And it is relatively simple in principle. Actually getting it to work is, is, is uh, can take a bit of time. But in principle, uh, it's pretty simple. So let's have a look at our Pac-Man to start with. Okay, so I've got a, a circular disc. Here is my layout. It's quite large. It's laid on the floor. So don't forget you're going to be looking down with a camera looking straight down at your arena. And there we go. Let's, let's just get our Pac-Man disc. I'll try, try and grab it because it's got lots of things around it to make sure I get there we go and this right so basically uh, what it says is is if the left stick is pushed in the left direction then we are going to move our object in a in a direction and <coughs> we're gonna say left equals true so if we move left we're gonna set a boolean that says left um, and we're also going to set our last direction as a little text variable here to say it's left. Else, global left equals false. So it's the same with the right direction, and same with the up direction, and same with the down direction. Uh, when you're not moving the left stick, we're going to say if the last direction hit was left then we're going to say global left is still true etc 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 okay so that pac-man uh, will still react after you, you first started i haven't set a default so you see at the beginning it's just a, a, a yellow circle uh, but you could easily set um last direction to be left or right or whatever as a default to start with so that you do get a pac-man um mouth moving so that's just the Pac-Man and that's all the movement of that yellow disc. Now on top of the yellow disc are four segments. Let me just pull one up. There we go. Four, four of those. And in their brain, it's this one says if global up is true, then every half a second we're going to turn the visibility on and off. Uh, otherwise it's false. So if we're moving up, this is the this is the little wedge that is going to flash on and off to give him that mouth movement. And you do it for four four squares, and there you go. Now, how you set up your your pet rank game otherwise, um, that's basically the animation thing. What you're doing is you're turning uh, visibility of various parts on and off depending on which way. Uh, the controller is being moved or the player is facing or, or whatever so it's a very simple uh, animation system um, on this one uh, we've got exactly the same exactly the same code this time I've got this little man there we go so this little man here, when global right is true, he'll be visible. That's it. But this isn't animated. 
You wouldn't say this was animated. This is not an animated uh, thing. The Pac-Man is sort of animated, but it's basically visibility turning on and off that gives a sort of a mouth opening and shutting uh, situation. But it's not really animation. You're you're just putting in a picture depending on which way the, the controller has been moved or the object is facing. That is all you're doing. So uh, the next step up, of course, is... Um, fuller animation so let me show you that now okay so now using that exactly the same principle of determining uh, using a boolean to say whether you're facing left or facing right uh, we're going to create an animation of movement facing left and facing right uh, now that animation of movement uh, only happens when you're actually pushing the joystick so that uh, you, it, it matches up with the movement so when you stop moving the joystick the animations will go back to zero when you push that joystick the animation number will go up and up and up and up and the animation cells are all numbered and they'll play these in sequence and you should get the uh, effect of uh, a walking animation now i apologize for my lack of skill in animating uh, pixels but here we go so there we are he's got a little jaunty walk and I've got it the other way around without that white square, which I think it looks a little bit more effective. Okay, so he's he's walking up and down like so, and you can also jump. There we are. Right, so how is it done? Well, it's, like I say, it's very similar to that Pac-Man game in that you've set a Boolean to say, I'm facing left, I'm facing right. But this time you're going to have um, an animation number variable which is going to be increased as you move and all of that is in our player brain here now he's invisible so you don't see him but he's the one that controls all this animation so i've set all of my animation cells into a set in an object set uh, so it makes it easier to turn them all on and all off when I need to. Um, otherwise you're going to have to go in and, and turn them all off and on. So I'm saying when I'm facing right and moving and not jumping, uh, turn all of the left set off because we don't want those on. And then we'll start with the animation at cell number one. And then for every three frames, we're going to increase that animation number. And then we'll say when that animation number is one, we're going to play animation cell one. Otherwise, we're animation cell one is invisible. And we go that through all of the numbers. Uh, and then uh, there's nine uh, animation cells in this movement. Once it's hit that nine, it's going to go back down to one again and go again. So that's basically it and that you do that for both sides now the jump uh where's the jump it's up here somewhere right when jumping uh we make all of the right set and the left set invisible and then um if you're facing right then you are going to show the jump right tile and if we're facing left we're going to show the jump left tile and then we've got a countdown of 0.5 seconds we're going to make that visible for 0.5 seconds you could do that in frames if you want to work out how many frames you want him to be doing that jump move and then we turn that boolean jump equals false and the jump boolean is set when you press the a button jump equals true and that's basically it. Um, it's very similar to that Pac-Man brain in, in principle. It's slightly different um, th the way this has been done because it's done based on the movement of the, uh, whether the, the rate cast is, is, is going, but you could do it in exactly the same way as the Pac-Man one and do it based on whether you've moved your stick left, right, up or down, etc. It is, it's the principle is the same and it's exactly the same and that's how it works. Now, when you're doing animation, you've got to make sure your animations are in the same position. Now, you could try 
uh, picking these things up and laying them one on top of the other uh, but I find that that when you've got lots of animations like this actually trying to do that and then grab each one out if you have a problem with any individual one uh, is a really difficult thing to do so you're best off laying them out like this so you can get grab whichever one you need to grab um, and then just set their position um, to be um, this position cube here I'm just saying um, we want our animation frames to be here in this block we don't want them to, to appear anywhere where it's going to interfere with him moving so just put it in front uh, because the camera angle is such as it uh, you won't really notice uh, that it's in a slightly different position if you put it in exactly the same position as the wooden peasant he has difficulty moving um, so that's uh, why we do it that way and I have uh, these cells on little stands because um, the the way these are facing the position variable the position vector of all of these once you've glued them together are dependent on which is the last square you added and if uh, and it can cause a problem so that the, the position of this one might be that foot there and not the center so what we do is we we get a nice little cube like this and we um, make a little stand and we'll stick him in the middle like that and we do that for all of these squares and then we position this square and that way we know we're all going to be in the same position because the closest you can get to them being exactly the same the better your animation is going to be now you can't you don't have to just do animation with uh, these pixel shapes so let me show you now um, something that that you might be want to do with just rocks and things so what I have here is a series of uh, mouths now if you go on the internet and, and uh, look at uh, animation for mouth movement you'll find uh, lots of help with uh, the different vowel sounds and uh, mouth shapes that animators use to make animated mouths just find yourself a nice sheet with uh, lots of uh, mouth pictures on there um, I found one that had uh, nine different mouth shapes and so I've recreated those now what I did is I made my made my uh, first mouth which had everything in it it had teeth it had a tongue it had uh, the lips and everything uh, and then I copied it out nine times because we want them all to be uh, as identical as possible so we we'll do the shape and then I made sure that I copied the the mouth shapes so this one's the top teeth you can now see both the teeth uh, you can see both the teeth but not so much of the bottom teeth and this this mouth has got a little bit smaller that's an O shape that's a uh shape that's the teeth coming down that's a closed mouth that's the tongue hitting the top of the teeth and again so different shapes of the mouths and you recreate them on your mouths so, and what I've done here is I've used this asteroid at the back here and made it black as my background uh, and then depending on what you want to use you could use it the same color as your background or whatever and then put a black in the thing for the mouth but this is what I've done and I just attached every single uh, rock uh, that I used to make this mouth with so then when I made a copy I can delete and move anything as I need to so that one's got a tongue for example etc etc so you make all of these and you will name them the different phonetic sounds like ooh and m and t and that sort of thing and we're then going to place them on our model here is our statue come mountain and what I've done is I've made copies of all these mouths it's always a good idea to make copies of things then if you make a mistake you've always, you haven't lost your original there we go now you notice some of these I've changed the color of the backgrounds um, to, to a sort of a brown color 
which are grey colour by the sorry. Uh, but otherwise it's it's these here. It's a copy of these over here. And all I've done is I've I put these in the in the position of his mouth. Where I want his mouth to be. So round about there. And then when you lay them all, try to get them all in the same position. Don't forget your they're not all going to be shown at the same time so it doesn't matter that um, you can see lots of little bits it's okay now inside each of these um, mouths is this piece of code if I can grab it when not visible for each of the attachments it visible equals false so when this asteroid is not visible then all of its attachments are not visible either and when it is visible, all the attachments are visible. That way the whole mouth is going to be shown. Let me try and grab it. Sorry, there's too many objects. There we go. And we just lay that in the same position as the other bits. There we go. And I have a logic cube here. And this is where I want my speech bubble to appear. And it says once. Anim equals zero. Uh, right, countdown for timer five in frames loop, and I'm incremented by one. So this is the same principle as before, uh, with uh, the animation cells being incremented, and you're getting a different animation. So when it hits ten, uh, it goes back to one, and we're saying when anime anim equals one or two, then I'm going to show the e. Um, shaped mouth and then I'm going to show the l shaped mouth and then the u shaped mouth and if it's greater than uh, 5 then I'm going to show the m shaped mouth and if the animation is less than 5 so it's playing the animation I'm going to say hello uh, in a speech bubble and I've got it as the largest HUD and the largest font. So what this is going to do is going to play through the animations and it's going to turn uh, the visibility of those mouths on and off. And this is the effect. Now, I don't think I ever saw anybody do this in Project Spark. Um, if I, if you did do it, I apologise. I didn't see, I don't remember seeing it. Um, but uh, I wish I had thought this out at the time because I think it would have blown people's minds. <laughs> because it certainly would have blown mine. It would be like, oh my God, I've got a talking statue. That is fantastic. I mean, obviously, I've, I've done this very quickly. You would spend a lot more time get these mouse in right perfect positions and they would look really amazing and uh, they would be much more stylish than uh, than what I've done but you can see the effect with something very simple there I only spent an hour doing this today so uh, they're not all that great but you can see sort of saying hello 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 yes it sort of works okay so there we are how to do animation in Project Spark and lots of different ways that you can do it. Um, let me turn that hello off because it's annoying. Um, so from pixel art to animating props to um, just using a, a, like an Atari style pointing in the right direction, there's lots of things that you can do. So uh, I'd love to see anybody's attempts at animation in Project Spark. Uh, it is 30 frames a second as, as a guide. So uh, if you wanted to, you could do as much as 30 different animated cells if you really wanted to make it the smoothest animation you possibly can do. Otherwise, I, w I would say anywhere between 5 and 10 uh, cells per, per second is probably plenty. Uh, to give you a nice effect. So thanks for watching and keep sparking!